Hey guys, this is Base P86. Thought I wanted to make my first video um, about like making arguments on certain issues or certain subjects or anything like that. I decided to cover a pretty um, pretty self-defeating question that a lot of skeptics tend to ask people about the nature of God, like God's nature of His omnipotence and His omniscience versus. Um, any logical possibilities that alleged logical possibilities that may affect his nature or anything like that. Um, and that common question is, can if God is omnipotent, can he create a stone so big that he cannot lift it? And at first glance, you'll often hear this question to be kind of a philosophical um, question. That, ten, that sounds like it has kind of a deep consideration of, that um, has kind of like a deep, uh, valid philosophical position within it. Um, usually, usually um, the person who brings about this question will usually say, if God cannot lift the stone, then logically he is not all-powerful. I remember I debated with an atheist who at one point brought about this same question. And what I did was I asked him a question in response. I said, well, let me ask you a question. And he said, okay. If God is omnipotent, why can't he lift the stone? Isn't he all-powerful? And his response when he the first word the first word that he said in response to me i knew that he was not even thinking about the logical contradiction that he was presenting he said huh uh and he said because he created the stone so big that he couldn't lift it what did he notice what he just did he automatically begged the question by arguing the same premises he didn't do anything to add in any new information for his position all he did was just argue the same thing over and over again and i said and then i said in response to him ah but if he is all powerful then shouldn't there be a, then should there not be any case where he cannot create or lift any stone of any size. Shouldn't he be able to lift stones, create and lift stones of all sizes? If God is all-powerful, then logically there shouldn't be an instance as to where his power should be limited. And from the very instance that you asked, that you brought about the question, you automatically told me that God is already not omnipotent. You said that God cannot lift the stone. But if God is all-powerful, then logically he should be able to create or lift any stone of any size. What you just did is that you your question automatically already stated that God is not omnipotent. And then you concluded that, therefore, God is not omnipotent. So what you did is that you argued a redundancy. And also you lo uh, logically argued a, a logical contradiction. If God is all-powerful, then why couldn't he lift the stone? That's the fundamental problem. You see, this question is not a, a valid question. It is a logically contradictory question. What it does is that it sets up a false dichotomy in which there has to be only one or two instances that are uh, one or two options that are supposed to happen. And then it basically refutes those only t two options. So what the skeptic is doing is that he is arguing a straw man. Do you see the problem here? Do you see the problem? You, ha you cannot have uh, two actions that are stated in a question and then say that God cannot do one of those actions. He has to be able to do both actions if he is omnipotent. 
but you are insisting, as the skeptic, that he has as to not lift the stone of that size. And that is a straw man. That is a contradiction, it is a false dichotomy, and it is a straw man. It is three fallacies in one. In fact, there are a lot of arguments that skeptics uh, present that do, con that do contain more than one fallacy. And I can, and I will post up more videos on this. But uh, this is uh, basically an intellectual trap that skeptics love to use. They're saying, if God cannot create a stone that size, then he is not omnipotent. But from the very beginning, they were already arguing that God is already not omnipotent by saying that he cannot lift that stone. So what they were doing, and then they conclude, see, God loses either way. When you, f see th when you see in a certain argument that a skeptic presents in which God loses either way, then the problem is not with uh, the Christian's response. The problem is with the skeptic's initial argument. If, if it says that God loses either way, you know that there's a contradiction involved in the skeptic's argument not in the, in the Christian's answer. And now we can move on to the n next question, which is, can God create a riddle in which he cannot solve? And I usually respond, and I usually respond by saying, if God is all-knowing, then logically there is no riddle that he cannot solve. And if God is not omnipotent, and if God is omnipotent, then there is no riddle that he can create. That's the answer. The answer is, no, God cannot create a, st God cannot, uh, create a riddle that he cannot solve. But then the skeptic will say, but th and if he cannot create the riddle that he cannot solve, then he is not omnipotent. If he can, then he's not all-knowing. Again, it's the same principle. It looks a little bit it looks like a little bit more of a tricky question, but actually it's the exact same principle. They are deliberately setting up a false dichotomy as a form of a straw man. So the answers to the questions are no God cannot create a stone so big that he cannot lift it. If he could create a stone that he could not lift, then he is not all powerful. And if God it could create a riddle that he could not solve, then and his nature would be self-defeating. So what they're basically doing is they're trying to set up this false dichotomy. And that's the basic principle. You can't argue this. This argument is completely invalid. So if you're a skeptic and you have tried to use this argument against Christianity, you have to see the logical inconsistency in this argument. This is, and that's the basic principle of this video. Um, but if you want to look up some videos about other self-defeating arguments, I'll be glad to post them up, um, like what is truth, or like there's no such thing as absolute truth, I'll be glad to address some of those. Or you can check out uh, Grandma Stola's videos on self-defeating arguments, and I'll provide links to that up here in the description. So I hope you, gla you guys like this. Um, this is not an attack on skeptics. This is with all due love and respect. This is not a valid argument. So I hope you understand that we're not tr that it's not trying to insult any uh, skeptics. It's trying to understand the actual logical consistency within your argument. So I'm glad you guys could stick around to watch this, and I hope you um, and I hope you subscribe to my channel. And I appreciate you watching this. So thank you very much. Love you all. God bless. Much love all, to all of you.